Thank you for your report. We shall inform the troops of these developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Allow me to go and speak with the ones at the Victor's spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. Hopefully. Not like you traitor. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister? Please do so. I am sorry to have put you through this. My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. So tell me, what else have we learned? As you may have already heard, we have succeeded in curing the members of the Popularis, Maxima identified. I mean, hell yeah, that works. They have provided us with some intriguing insights into the current state of Garlemald. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. Assassin? I don't know if I count that as an assassination. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much, he just kind of walked up and poked him in the belly with no resistance. It was pretty pathetic. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> just you say you just love Yastola's coat. Yastola is very cute right now. Fighting broke out in the capital, where Nerva's third legion clashed with the first, who remained loyal to Varus even after his death. Of course, even imperial warmongers would balk at the idea of turning their shining city into a battleground. Like burning down the wood to spite the wasps. Neither side would be so mad. Okay, that's actually a, I like that analogy. That's really cool. Unless something or someone, someone. inflamed their animosity to such an extent that they could not help but act against their better judgment. I mean, Asai does drive me to violence as well. Or sorry, I mean, Fan Daniel. The gimlet dark, does it not? The Emperor's sudden withdrawal from the front line, specifically. Nerva and his father, Titus, Varus's then political rival, took advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zenos had been possessed by a demon. Elidibus, what better way to disparage your enemies than with the truth or a close enough approximation? Elidibus. Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. Illida Bussy. Now, while some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances. One after another, suddenly and suspiciously. I say Illida Bussy and then you say Illida Baby. God damn it. Ha don't, don't, don't be wholesome while I'm being weird. <laughs> See, Bat Cat gets it. Illida Bussy, my beloved. Thank you. Sheesh as well, Noir. Sheesh. He was not a child. He was a teenager at the time and has lived for thousands of years. It's fine. Maybe don't be weird. Maybe true power. How you doing? <laughs> Again, Elidibus. Like as not, he had a hand in it. No evidence was found to implicate Varus, certainly. Okay, you can't you can't pull a lolly card on me, Pip. He was a full-grown man. In every body he inhabited. I feel like I'm digging my own hole deeper. I feel like I'm digging my hole deeper. All I can say is if you read Twilight and liked it, you can go you can you can look yourself in the mirror and call yourself a hypocrite. How's that? <laughs> Nevertheless, Titus, Nerva, and the Third Legion would have judged it a brazen attempt by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Sosgalvis is murdered. And Garlemald's own prodigal son, Gaius Van Belsar, is named the murderer. Hey, chat, isn't the cutscene really interesting? We should... 
Oh, we should watch the cutscene instead of talking in chat. Shortly thereafter, Nerva claims the right of succession. And in response, the First Legion claims the assassination was part of a coup d'etat orchestrated by Titus and Nerva. Coup d'etat. So no one is at fault, and everyone else is to blame. <laughs> Damn it, Shine! <laughs> Show to Linnipus. God damn it. Oh. I should add that both parties received substantial financial backing, presumably to provide them with the means and encouragement to pursue a swift victory, and that these contributions came from the self-same benefactor. Damn, Daniel. I'd heard House Brutus had been filling the Third Legion's coffers, but the first as well. It would seem so. Though the Popularis determined that the First Legion received funds from a variety of organizations, all had connections to House Brutus. So Fandaniel, in the guise of Arsahi, was playing both sides against Damn, each other the entire Daniel. time. The information we gained from my friends does not end there. One night, shortly after fighting broke out, the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. From that point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacius. That's unfortunate. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation, they somehow recall Emperor Varys giving them orders in their dreams. May the Tower of Babel stand as testament to the glory of Garlemald. This sounds awfully familiar. We have something to show you all. Radio. Varys spoke to them through this radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, that would be inexplicable. Yeah, it'd be weird if like a corpse could be possessed by something to stand up and act. That would be weird if there was something in this game that could do that, you know? We are of one mind then. We are? I'm not. Enli hey, enlighten me. The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. Okay. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. Wait, 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 so anyone who owns a radio is protected from, from the primals and that's why they didn't get turned? Really? Oh yeah, yeah, the Tower of Babel in, um, in Christianity is why is why I know about left where it was like the tower that was supposed to reach the heavens and God broke it and that's why we have a bunch of different languages because it sundered the knowledge I think this is what I remember from Sunday school when I was like 13. <laughs> Tigris how you doing? A picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. No wonder Licinia kept it close. <gasps> My friends, I must speak with you. Serena has a voice line? Excuse me? I was convinced that like only Sadu would have been given a line. Hell yeah. Hey Serena, how you doing? How's it going in Garlemald? Only a little bit of sad. You know, only a little bit of dark, dreary, and <laughs> deadly. Oh. A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Men, we think, but one who has not been made thrall. Thankfully, Magni restrained him before blood was spilled. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him questions. Hello? Who do we have here? Garlians? 
Traitors to your homeland. Have you no shame? Hey, exactly what happened? I am Lucia Junius, a Temple Knight of Ishgard. And you are? Julius Pier Norbanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me. We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from it. Like you, our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered most. This we know, and that is why we have come to offer you our aid, that we may unite against our common foe. Whether you believe me or not, those are the facts. Now, answer me this. Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. Yeah, grumble. If it is supplies you seek, we would gladly share ours, or turn a blind eye while you leave with your spoils. <laughs> this feels great. It's like, yo, man, I'll just pretend I never saw you. Take it, brag to your friends about how easy we were to steal from, whatever. I will not negotiate. My commander will determine how to deal with you and yours. If you wish to treat with him, I will take you, but no more than three. I don't much like the sound of that. But if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two of us and... I feel like you two have been traumatized enough. Please allow me and Alizé to act as envoys. Oh, wait, wait, what? You I understand, Alfino, but why Alice? Alice has not shown herself to be a good diplomat at all. <laughs> in the middle of an enemy camp alone, surrounded, unarmed, with no help coming, what does he choose to do? Be arrogant and berate enemy commander? Oh, he's very smart, Shin. You are a hundred percent right. Hell yeah. <laughs> May I ask why? We have seen with our own eyes the hardships the Guardians face how their futures and lives hang in the balance. It's not the warmest invitation, but it's an opportunity to prove our intentions true. Maybe not a chance to make things right, but a chance to make them better. To make sure the best to tag along with you when things go south. <laughs> you just pop that LB3, come on. Always for diplomacy, Alice there for diplomacy, it goes downhill. Isn't that what I'm there for, though? Like, aren't I the trump card against that? And we're both red mages. It's like it's like having it's like having a peanut butter and peanut butter sandwich. Like, you don't need that. What would your mother say about like the two of you go by yourselves? I can see that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause, but you will proceed with the utmost care. You can't make me do anything. We'll get two Vera flashbangs out. A couple of children and what? A cell sword? A cell Is this an insult? A cell sword. Ooh. Not in the least. You will find that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. There are many dangers on the road ahead. I will need that back. Am I going to give him his gun sword back? Are you kidding me? His shitty gun blade? His knockoff Garlean gun blade? Dude is so arrogant, they are zero. They really are. The common sellsword. Common sellsword. You'll be relieved as invited guests, and so I urge you to observe proper social etiquette and conduct yourselves accordingly. H hi. H he hello, y'all. This. Are you. You're just aggressively sitting at me. This is wild. 
<laughs> You'll be received as invited guests, so I urge you to observe proper social etiquette and conduct yourselves accordingly. Your safe return takes precedence above all else. Remember this. Thancred in particular will worry sick if you're gone too long. May the fury watch over and keep you. Oh, hello. <laughs> the council will convene to judge the streamer. Please. Please. I swear. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do it. All right, this is far enough. Listen carefully. We head over that hill and follow the road until we reach Liminal Station 4. Children in the lead, I want you where I can see you. We do have names, you know. I'm Ali saying this is Alf, you know. And last but not least, there's Talail. Talail? Where have I heard that name before? No matter Alfino and Ali say, we'll watch the road ahead while we bring up the rear. I wasn't lying about there being many dangers, so you're to run, not saunter, run towards the station. Do you even think about going for your weapons? The deal's off. Should any creatures by the way, we go around them. North of the station is Rigio, Rigio Domorum, one of the main residential areas, or at least it was. The afflicted roam the streets in packs. They'll tear us to shreds if given the chance. Keep close, no wandering off. Understood. From here, we'll be heading northeast. Keep to the left of the railway. While, route is, while the route itself is straightforward, getting past the hordes unseen is anything but. Keep your weapons at the ready. They will attack their own countrymen. Aye, they spare their own, but slaughter the rest without hesitation. They will try their best to avoid detection. The chances by sneaking by completely unnoticed are slim at best. I will lead the way, but in the event we are seen, you ought to fight them off. Those two will follow us, provided they can refrain from drawing their weapons. While I doubt they'll be foolish enough to stab their guy in the back, I will not take the chance. With that said, let us proceed. Taco Baco. My wife and I call it Tipo Bipo. The closest Taco Bell to me is about 45 minutes away. It's plain to see what I chose. This is their base of operations. Could have done a lot worse. Even so, I imagine it's not the easiest place to live. Indeed. And if Julius was willing to make the perilous journey to camp broken glass and search for food, their own supplies must be all but exhausted. They may be shielded from the wind and snow, but it's still bitterly cold. Much like Victor's spoils, it must be a constant struggle to keep the people warm. Don't we have voices? Or you may be here as guests, the others will not take kindly to your presence. My commander's in the locomotive over there. Definitely, Fat Cat. I'm glad you came. <laughs> I don't have money for Taco Bell. It's true, I shouldn't be spending money either. I should put a longer redeem on the Ara Ara. Y'all have never been this horny before. Ah, Dad. You degenerate. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. I like that voice. Got here just in time. You did, Lysander. How you doing? Yes, sir. <laughs> just, just stand against the wall. I present to you our commander, Lord Quintus Van Kina, Legatus of the First Legion. Damn, bro. Look at that beard. Your rival and mine. No mustache. It's a choice. I used to do no mustache too. And you know what? That just means you can't grow it. I get it. The first? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. 
What a weirdly charged sentence. A lot of us died and I can't fight. Bet you're happy about that. What? <laughs> Rude. Be real, Quintus is rocking. He is. He is, Nashi. You're right. You're right. Hey, you're right. <laughs> what the Quintus he doing, Noir? No. <laughs> Oh, it would happen in 5.2. Thank you, Kia. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. What do you mean? You invaded us. What are you talking about? that you learned to keep your distance. Oh, oh, history. Oh, okay. We knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. Conquest and empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this. And through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. This is just so much judging other by how you yourself think. It really is, Lev. Don't think he meant to spend his entire life in the capital. It gets a little bit of brainwash. Final Fantasy XII Judge Armor. I love the Judge Armor. One of the best things to come from Final Fantasy XII. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. And after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. Remember when Alice couldn't even, like, say a good sentence or talk eloquently? This is incredible. Holy moly, Ali! Say, Alvin is over there, like jaw on the floor, like, "Hey, that's my job." <laughs> Love this man who has absolutely no position to bargain. Is so caught up in his own nationalism that he can't help but argue. I feel like it's also not just nationalism; it's pride too, and like understanding of what his. It's like understanding of what happens when two powers end up fighting. Because what is the next thing to be done? Is bring Garlemald to heal so they don't fight in war anymore so it's it for him i feel like he's just being pragmatic after being in war for most of his life and even though it's misguided based upon knowledge that he has as false like all the propaganda of garlemald it's it's from his position pragmatic so much blood has been shed so much lost all because of this endless war who wouldn't want to end it? How you doing, Kitty? I think I saw you earlier, but didn't say hi. I apologize. How's your day going? Can we not work together 
to face our problems as one? Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Because... Okay. Okay, not... Okay. Remember you guys said it was frustrating? I was like, oh, that makes sense, yeah. I... This one sentence immediately pissed me off. <laughs> Woo! Is it because we do not share your faith? That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Disparity is the root of discord, and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. Ooh, ooh, I'm angry. Ooh. That is why we Garlians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. There's a lot more I can say, honestly. Oh, you idiots. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah! We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up, as by dawn you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to be dead. You are free to move about the encampment, but there is one condition. Collar them. Alder them? Oh. Oh. What are these? Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a. He literally pain. put a dog shot collar on us! He, he literally put a dog sh shot collar on us! He's got a fucking electric fence up! <laughs> ah! Ah! I'm with you, Fane. Let me kill his ass. Like, I, I legitimately, if I was in this situation, would not have let this happen. Ooh. Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Followed. The shock would be no more than an itch. No. If he refuses to obey, we will activate the twin's restraints instead. Said the one smart thing, <laughs> pretty much. You're right, I should have sold the fish. I'm, I apologize. You need to worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. <laughs> It's just a fashion statement. 
Even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? Peace, love, and happiness. Thank you for the follow, Tilly. Heck yeah, I appreciate it. On the coldest, blackest of nights, meager though it may be, you must share the warmth of our fire. That's adorable. He's the same name as Squall's teacher, Bramble. By the way, how dare you quote Oshifon at me? How dare you? How dare you? You are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others... Well, yeah, no shit. Be. It's almost like your whole country is bent on making people, you know, inferior to them. The whole thing is like, we are superior. It's almost like, it's almost like... Thanks for watching. I was absolutely enamored by these characters. It was so nice being able to see Garlemald as more than just, you know, a city-state that's trying to conquer us. I know we had some characters like Gaius that come in and give us some of that uh, duality to the situation, but it's really nice seeing actual Garleans just trying to survive. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're feeling extra generous, we do have a Patreon. I'm trying to do this full time eventually, so it'd be really nice if you could support. We do have weekly community nights and shouts out at the end of the video. Speaking on, I'd like to thank John Best, Roro Lai, Sven Folger, Rosalia Streaming Network, and Kev was here. And as always, have a lovely day.